fucking good okay okay <laughs> when I first saw this on Facebook earlier I could not believe this for a minute I, I thought to myself no this this has to be photoshopped right well this isn't photoshopped ladies and gentlemen this is real life Columbia University Law School or as I like to call it clueless has hired Jim Comey, the same Jim Comey that allowed justice to turn a blind eye when Hillary Clinton rigged an entire electoral process and almost got away with it. By the way, this is the same man whom Donald Trump fired, by the way, for rigging an election in her favor. That James Comey is going to be teaching at Columbia University Law School. I wonder what they're going to be teaching there. Election Rigging 101? Hi, I'm Professor Comey, and welcome to Election Rigging 101, but you can call me Bitch. <laughs> That's just... This is so fucked up, man. Oh my god, this is so fucked up. <laughs> I can't even believe that people would be this stupid to fucking... <laughs> See, there's a reason why justice. Oh my god. I can't even believe this. There's a reason why justice turns a blind eye because they allow its lawmakers who break their own laws to get away with it unscathed scot-free, without any punishment. This is why we have to amend our Constitution, people! This is why we have to amend our Constitution. To prevent people like that from getting in power ever again. If we want to truly be great again as a nation, if we truly want America to be great again, we're going to have to have term limits for every single congressman that enters the White House. We're going to have to have term limits for every senator, every House Republican, every representative, every Democrat, everybody in Congress. Except for the Supreme Court. Except for the Supreme Court, because God knows they have to go through a bunch of bullshit to get to their position in life. Because God only knows they're going to be there for life anyway. I'm telling you, if that isn't the biggest bunch of laughable bullshit I have ever seen, then clearly you don't know Brock. I'm not talking about that character off of Mortal Kombat either. I'm talking about that communist Muslim monkey, Barack Obama. Who let James Comey do all this? I mean, it's kind of sad, really, isn't it? Mind blown, right? Yeah. I know. I've been there. This story and more on today's Spot the Liberal. It's going to be a good one, people. You better buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride. Stop it! 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 Welcome to Spots Be Literal! If Trump is a hate-mongering evil man like the media constantly tells us, then why aren't his followers the ones killing cops, destroying property, looting stores, assaulting innocent bystanders? No! 
The Democrats are doing that. And all their stupid, retarded supporters. Yes, I just made that face thrown at me. So let me explain something to you people, okay? Let me explain something to you people right now. We are undergoing the biggest siege in the history of the world. And it's happening in the most freest of nations, no less. The United States of China. Well, it's, it's going to be the United States of China if Biden gets in there. But, I mean, people, listen to me. To all you people who voted Democrat this year and in the last electoral cycle, let me, let me ask you something. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you stupid? Do you not realize that the people you're voting for are going to turn America into a socialistic hell? Do you not see that? Are you dumb enough to where you're just going to turn a blind eye to that? Because if you are, then guess what? Your wish may just be granted. Because if this bullshit doesn't get resolved next month on the 21st or whenever Inauguration Day is in January, we're going to have a dementia-suffering man as president, and he's going to be out and deemed incompetent to lead a nation by all of his international peers within three months, and then that dumb bitch Kamala's going to take over. Yeah, imagine that. Some stupid old hag named Kamala... Harris, I'm not talking about the wrestler Kamala, I'm talking about the politician Kamala. Alright, so don't get it twisted. We've got a woman named Kamala Harris who is just as radical left as Ilhan Omar, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Those people are some of the dumbest people you will ever see to ever lead a nation of this caliber. Oh, by the way, a pantsuit that looks great on Hillary would pretty much make my Christmas. I mean, people, Hillary Clinton is getting away with it. She should be in fucking prison. You know why she's not in prison? Because she's above the laws that she makes. That's why. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to explain to you why America is dead in less than two minutes. Start the timer, here we go. America is dead because we constantly allow fuckheads like Barack Obama and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Dick Cheney to allow complete control over our lives to be a thing. Right? America is dead because we allow these people to get in there fuck as much shit up as they can, destroy our waves of life in the process, and in the meantime, it's just absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous because we're supposed to be a nation of the people, for the people, by the people, and for all the people, and yet, we're the only nation where over 10% of its population is full of illegal immigrants. At some point, you know, this is why I hate what this country's become. This is why I hate what America has become. Because we have a generation of people at or around my age that don't know a single thing about the Constitution, don't know any of the bills of rights, any of the ten amendments in the Bill of Rights, any of the constitutional amendments, people that don't know shit because they were conditioned into thinking stupidity is socially acceptable. I know people that are at or around my age that are victims of this indoctrination. I know it personally. I've seen it. And even the people in the Generation X as well. I mean, seriously. You gotta understand, this isn't a joke, this is real life, this is going to happen if we allow it to happen, but we can't. Okay, so there's a statement 
made by Fox News Channel's Judge Jeanine Pirro. You know, the same Fox News Channel that sold out to Rothschild when they called Arizona in Biden's favor with only half of the votes being counted? Yeah, that Fox News Channel. But Judge Jeanine Pirro, and I hope to God she has enough common sense to leave that fucking waste bin of a news channel. She said recently, there is a cleansing needed in our FBI and DOJ. It needs to be cleansed of full-blooded idiots and dumb old jackasses who should not just be fired, but also need to be taken out in handcuffs because these are some of the biggest, in general, wastes of life. They're not good people. They're terrible, terrible, terrible people. Now, I know that there's at least one sense of good in them, but they're never going to show it because every bit of good that they think they're showing is fraudulent. It's not genuine. And yet people like you in the media, yes, I'm talking to you, CNN. I'm talking to you, ABC. I'm talking to you, MSNBC. I'm talking to you, NPR. People like you in the mainstream media want to shit all over me because I'm right and you're not. Well, let me tell you something, media. You're wrong and I'm right. And that's that. As far as I'm concerned, Wikipedia and Facebook are surprisingly good uses of information. And then you get golden nuggets like this. So, that being said, I'm going to move on now to our next topic, and it has to deal with something that I'm pretty sure you guys all know by now. It's about the election crisis. Let's continue with that, shall we? Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, the entire mainstream media, save for One America and Newsmax, have called Biden the winner of the presidential election for 2020. But the media does not get to say who is president. We, the people, get to say who's president. And we, the people, say almost unanimously, I say almost because there's still a bunch of dumb idiots out there who think that Joe Biden would be even competent enough to run his own bathroom, let alone an entire nation. But this dumb jock, this dumb old jock in Joe Biden says, you know, dumb old Joe, dumb old Joe, he says that he will ask Americans to wear masks for the first hundred days he's in office. Um, no, that ain't gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. And I'll tell you why that's not going to happen. Because a civil war is imminent. You know the same civil war that was supposed to have ended in 1865? Well, guess what? It's going to go on full blast here in a little bit. Because I'm telling you, in just a couple months, everyone in the nation is going to be choosing sides. It's going to be the people versus the government. Everybody in the mainstream media and the government versus we the people. It's coming, people. It's coming. You know it. I know it. It's a fact. Deal with it. So let me explain something to you people. You see those three individuals on your screen? The one on your left, the one in the center, the one on your right? They are all losers! Losers! Every last one of them, they're losers. I'm telling you what, if that's not a fact, then I don't know facts. I'm telling you, if there is not a civil war in the next couple of months, then there's going to be a civil war by the time spring comes around, because this dumb old Joe isn't going to last as president, if he is elected, which he won't be, because the Supreme Court's going to turn him down. You just wait. 
Supreme Court is going to shut them down. And before you know it, the Supreme Court is going to declare Donald Trump to still be our reigning, defending, undisputed president of the United States for a second term. It's going to happen, people. You wait. Come end of December, early January, it's going to happen. We have to take this all the way. Oh, by the way, Brian Kemp, thank you for helping the president out. It means a lot. Boys are watching. Now, ladies and gentlemen, your hero and mine, Donald John Trump Sr., recently made a Facebook post. He says that people in Georgia got caught red-handed and cold, bringing in massive numbers of ballots and putting them in so-called voting machines. Great job, Brian Kemp. Yes, great job indeed, because Brian Kemp is doing a fan-freaking-tastic job as governor of Georgia. I just know it. And you know... I'm going to explain something to you right now. When you have a Republican governor of a state that's Republican, nothing goes to waste. If you have a Democrat running your state, everything's going to go to waste. That's the difference between an actual human being and a puppet of the Rothschild regime. Big freaking difference, people. Big freaking difference. And you want to know something else? Brian Kemp initiated the whole thing by doing this little sting. I think he did this sting operation, didn't he? But anyway, Brian Kemp oversaw the whole thing, and by God, he made the most of it. And that's exactly what he did. He made the most of it. And because of that, people in Georgia are a lot better off knowing that the people who were rigging elections there got caught, and now they're going to be arrested for getting caught cold, bringing in massive numbers of ballots and putting them in so-called voting machines. Yes, you better believe it, people. It's a fact, and it's not a bunch of jack either. This is real life. This is happening. And you know, if all the United States were like Georgia, I think this nation would be a lot better off. Unfortunately, in my state, in my state, you've got a bunch of people, a bunch of people who think they know everything, but they know nothing about anything that they kindly claim to know. And it's, it's kind of sad, really. The state of everything is kind of sad in my home state. But sooner or later, I'm going to leave that hellhole. When, I do not know. It could be a few months. It could be a few years. There's no telling. But sooner or later, my time will come. All right, next story, please. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. All right, all right. A press release from the Arizona State Legislature from Senate President Karen Finn, House Speaker Russell Bowers, and I'm telling you what. Legislative leaders in Arizona are calling for a complete audit of the Maricopa County election software and equipment. Get this. Karen Finn, Senate President and Speaker of the House, Rusty Bowers. Rusty Bowers, I meant. Rusty Bowers. Today called for an independent audit of the Dominion software and equipment owned by Maricopa County in the 2020 general election. Or should I say used. The new leaders, along with incoming Senate Government Chair Michelle Ugenti Rita, and House Majority Leader Warren Peterson had numerous phone calls with members of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. 
As a longtime advocate for improving and modernizing our election system, I am pleased to learn that the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors is supportive of conducting an independent audit of their voting software and equipment, said Senator Eugenti Rita. It is important we maintain all the voting public's confidence in our elections, and this is a positive first step in the right direction. A significant number of voters believe that the fraud occurred, and with the number of irregularities, it is easy to understand why, to understand why, said House Majority Leader Peterson, especially concerning are the allegations made surrounding the vendor Dominion. It is imperative that the county immediately do a forensic audit on the Dominion software and equipment to make sure the results were accurate. By the way, nothing says I give a shit like destroying your state, Mr. Roy Cooper, you little bitch. And yes, he is a bitch. Don't get me wrong. A dog. An actual canine would become a better governor than Roy Cooper. You know, if the lockdown saved just one life, just one, the suicides, depression, anxiety, domestic violence, child abuse, school failures, poverty, unemployment, and bankruptcies will all be worth it! Yay! <laughs> And people in North Carolina were dumb enough to elect this guy to a second term. What the fuck, man? <laughs> this is unbelievable. I can't even believe this. <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you without a doubt in my mind. There is no question... Roy Cooper will go down as the worst governor North Carolina has ever had. That's probably because he freaking is. And you know what? I'm not wrong to say that either. And you know what I'm not wrong to say? You know what else I'm not wrong to say? I'll tell you. Roy Cooper is in it for himself. He's in it for himself. He's all about the money. He doesn't give a damn about any of us. And he certainly doesn't give a damn about the people who voted for him. Otherwise, he'd be doing everything possible to wipe that stupid freaking dumbass grin off of his face and actually get to work on helping us out for once. But you know what? He's not going to do that, people. He's not going to do it because he's a politician's... He's a politician, and politicians, politicians do nothing but serve as puppets to the great Rothschild regime. And I know that I'm probably slurring my speech a little bit. Quite frankly, I don't care, because this is completely unscripted. So to be blunt, a dog, like the one you'll see here, any dog in general would be a better governor of North Carolina then Mr. Roy, the party pooper, everybody's favorite pooper scooper cooper. <laughs> oh my God. I'll tell you what, man. Roy Cooper is the absolute pissing shits. He really is. He's the worst governor that North Carolina has ever had. He's killing small businesses. With a flick of a switch, he's killing small businesses. <laughs> and to all you people that voted for this dumbass, you deserve every bit of misery and pain that you get from this man. Because that's all he's going to give you. Nothing but misery and pain for the rest of your lives. Dead serious. <laughs> there is a guy named Jonathan Mangum. No, I'm not talking about the guy that serves as the announcer for Let's Make a Deal on CBS, who's also a comedian. I'm talking about another John Mangum who happens to know a lot about Christianity. 
and the Bible and what Christianity is supposed to be. See, he thinks along my level. He thinks in the way that I think in a more professional light. So I'm going to read to you what he says, and I'm going to close with this, and it's only going to take up about six minutes of your time. So if you can hold on these next six minutes, then you can go about what you're doing after this episode's over, because I promise you, you will not regret it. He says that the Holy Bible, which is not a man's theology, teaches that Christianity is a religion. When Father sent Jesus to destroy the works of the devil, the church's leaders at that time, which is now, by the way, that time has come, had turned God's religion into an abomination. Jesus came to reveal the false teachings of the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, meaning the big shot church leaders that think they know everything, that had changed God's covenant. The church leaders today have done the same thing to God's new covenant. The word of God speaks expressively about religion in the new contract. There's a verse in James chapter 1 verse 26. If any man among you seems to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, then this man's religion is null and void, meaning it's vain. Who is the man that will not bridle his tongue about the things of God's word, meaning the Holy Bible? He does not understand, but runs head on to the world with false doctrine or evil fruit about any topic in the Holy Bible. If they're not telling the truth about the Bible, you better not trust them with a damn thing. Because I guarantee you, the moment you trust them with anything, is the moment they will abuse that trust. So don't trust these false prophets as far as you can throw them, because they're not to be trusted. The same way the politicians in Congress are not to be trusted. The same way that the media is not to be trusted. Because they're all a bunch of asshat corporatists anyway who could give a damn about you or I. Moving on. He also goes on to say, pure religion and undefiled before God, and this is quoting James chapter 1 verse 27, and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. He asks, Do you have pure religion before your maker, or are you following the man-made teaching that Christianity is not a religion, but a relationship? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you now, I've been a Christian my whole life, born into into the Baptist faith. I was born into the Baptist faith because I knew... Somehow, even though I was born in the wrong generation, clearly, that God still had something for me to show the world. He wanted me to show these things to you people. And I'm not saying that I'm Jesus incarnate. I'll never be Jesus. No one will ever be Jesus. But here's the thing. God allows people like myself... And some of you out there, to show you why this world is so irreversibly screwed. I'm going to close with this, and and let me just say right now, he goes on to conclude, John Mangum goes on to conclude, visit the fatherless and widows, what would you do? Show up and say, hi, hope you have a good day, see you later, and I love you. Or would you show up with money and help them in the areas of their life and prove your faith? The false prophets want your money. Giving to the poor was how the Holy Ghost taught the Apostle Paul how to start tithing in the church. Not giving their money away to an already rich person in some rich synagogue. 
Those false prophets already have their mansions here on this earth. Beware. Read your Bibles. This is the revolution of Christianity. He, he actually, the, the last sentence that I just read to you about how this is the revolution of Christianity and how we should be ready for it, you know, he closes each of his Facebook posts with that. And I'm telling you what, if this guy isn't the closest, most accurate interpreter of God since Brandon Ware, when I first went to Green Street a few years ago, then I don't know what it is anymore that makes people want to see the truth. Anyway, just thought I'd give you about 31 minutes of my time. I'm very grateful that you guys got to tune in. I'm very grateful that I got to make this. So I hope you enjoy this as much as I made this. And in the meantime, I will see you in cyberspace. Good night, everybody.